One of the nation's deadliest scores is on the brown. He's searching for new game. Mountain West Conference action closes out a Friday night with the UNLV Runner Rebels taking their act on the road to do battle with the Boise State Broncos. And hello, everyone. I'm Richie Schuler. I'm David Gascon. Thanks for joining us tonight on FS1. Richie, you got to jump right into it because we mentioned so much hype throughout the week about Boise State. Tied for first in the Mountain West Conference. How have they accomplished that feat so far? You never underestimate defense. They hold teams to just 59 points per game, and they're the best rebounding team in the Mountain West. They're outstanding. And as far as they go, their defense goes. But on the other side, though, for UNLV, they want to be amongst the top five teams in the Mountain West Conference. Why is that? Well, they're really good. they got a great player in Bryce Hamilton. He's a lefty. He can create his own shot, does a lot of great things. He gets to the basket, but at the same time, he's excellent at hitting three-point shots as well. Very difficult to stop. Critical looking at the Mountain West Conference and where they stand right now. The starters in this ball game, Bryce Hamilton leads the conference in scoring just over 21 points per game. Eighth in the nation. And on the other side, Abu Kijab, 14 per game, six and a half rebounds. The one guy not playing tonight, Emmanuel Aitkot. He has not played the last two games because of a knee injury. Long, lengthy, and he's their point guard. So they got to find a way to live without Aitkot if you're Boise State. Opening tip off control by UNLV. They're going from left to right on your screen. Jordan McCabe with the basketball against Marcus Shaver Jr. to Nuga. Nuga picked up his dribble over on the outside. See for Ham down low in the block. He's an active man, but he'll come out on the screen with McCabe. Shot clock reads at eight. McCabe into the corner. Attacking is Nuga. Amongst the trees, he'll score anyway for the first point of this ball game. UNLV is out in front 2-0. You're going to see both these teams go four around one. They're going to spread the floor. They're going to look to attack, to get into the paint, to kick out for open shots, and make it difficult for the post defender down inside one-on-one. -on -one. Tyson Dagenhart, the freshman, going to work with the right hand is beautiful for him. First points of the ball game. This guy's been dynamite this season for the Broncos. He's been terrific. I mean, he's a big part of the reason why Boise State has won 15 of their last 16 games. He got thrown into the starting lineup, and they have been unbelievable ever since. Found the first run of the ball game for Shaver. Yeah, back to Dagenhart. He's averaging just a clip over 10 a night. 23 points. The other night against San Jose State, that's a career high for him, but it's not like it's in one game on, one game off type of no. ordeal for the freshman. Yeah, no, he's he's great. He's 6'7", he's maybe a little undersized, but makes plays down inside. But he's shooting over 40% from behind the arc, too. I mean, and, and people don't talk enough about his defense. What he does on the defensive end is a big part of the reason why they keep winning games with him in the lineup. McCabe on the curl outside. Nuga for three. Front iron tapped around. Controlled by Ham. Nicely done. Loses the handle on it. Key job, though. Loose ball. It'll be a foul appearing to be against Ham. So Royce Ham Jr., that's his first foul. So you see right here again, UNLV spreading the floor. Gets the three-point shot up. A little tussle for the basketball. I love the intensity level here early in the game. Ball's loose. Everybody's trying to win those 50-50 balls, right? Those 50-50 balls can determine the outcome of a game a lot of the time. We'll say hello to head coach Leon Rice of Boise State in a few moments. They have been dominant. The Broncos have been here at Extra Mile Arena. Nice spin move underneath. Armouche for two. A little too strong on a hand with the defensive rebound. But comes UNLV looking to push. The beast, they call him. The beast down inside. Very difficult to stop one-on-one -on -one down inside. Gilbert to Ham. Back to Ham, trying to go off the dribble. Nuga, 13 to go on the shot clock, taking his time, working patiently. Gilbert back into the corner. Nuga, reading the shot clock, it's at seven right now. Off the work quickly, five, four, Nuga attacking. He scores again, he's got a quick four. He's an energy guy. He just bounces all over the place when he's in the basketball game. Had nine points the other night. Three point away by Shaver, no good. Ham trying to climb up the ladder for a rebound, tapped out of bounds by Dagenhart. Possession goes to UNLV. Pavel Kuzmanovic coming in for the first time tonight. Kuzmanovic off the bench as a sophomore. Six foot five, 190 pounds. There's Leon Rice. 12 seasons as a head coach at Boise State. And man, he's not slowing down anytime soon. You see that home record here. It's terrific. Uh, he, under Leon Rice, Boise State has won 20 or more games eight of the last 11 seasons. 
Everybody talks about the benchmark being 20 win seasons. Eight of the last 11 years. Incredible. McCabe, nice turnaround. Back iron, though. Shaver, another rebound for Boise State. It's one thing that's made them so successful this season. Good shake by Shaver. Straight to the cup, he scores. This is the Marcus Shaver has been consistent all year. Now remember, Marcus Shaver transferred in from Portland a couple years ago. He was a big time scorer in the West Coast Conference. He's kind of taken a, a few fewer shots here at Boise State, but with the absence of Emmanuel Acott, you might see an old Marcus Shaver again. The cave baseline, nothing but the bottom of the net, six to four UNLV. McCabe against Air Force was just one of four from the field, had three points and ten assists though in that contest. That's the one area you want to look at. Assist to turnover ratio. There's Max Rice, the son of Leon Rice. Kuzmanovic off the screen for three. Way off the mark, no good. Rebound control, and back comes UNLV. Good pace of this ball game so far, just about four minutes into it. Glad he could be with us on a Friday night. You know, both teams like to push the basketball. I think everybody, oh, wow. Hamilton fouled on the three, count it. Bryce Hamilton is a guy that can come off the bounce or he can catch set with his feet and hands ready and knock down three-point shots. This is a little kick out from the baseline. No hesitation. Max Rice gets a piece of his arm, and that's an and one. That's something you never want to do is foul a shooter. And I tell you, Bryce Hamilton will make it pay. He is deadly from behind the arc. Over 1,100 games with a three-pointer, UNLV. That's incredible. Pretty good. You know, I, if I was the head coach at UNLV, you know what I'd be most stressed about? What's that? Breaking the record of three-point consecutive makes uh, in games year after year. There's Kevin Kruger. First look at him tonight. First year as the head coach of UNLV. Huge jab. Could shake to him. Loses the handle on it. Nice poke away. Waco coming into the contest was the one that manufactured that takeaway. UNLV with the advantage right now at 10-4. to four. They've had the jump so far in this ball game. Nuga outside, long range, yes. They're not stopping, are they? Nine-point lead for the road team. But if you're looking at UNLV, you're thinking, wow, they're scoring everywhere at the free throw line. They're getting to the basket. They're knocking down outside shots. One of the biggest keys for them in winning this game was to somehow battle against Boise State's length. They are long in every single position. And they're finding ways to score around that length already here early on. 9-0 run for UNLV to open up this ball game. Little forearm shiver into the back of Armush. And a timeout on the court. 5-12 to play here in the game's opening half. Great start for UNLV. They're out and running right now. 13-4. First half action here from Boise State, 15-12 to play in the game's opening half. 13-4 UNLV with the advantage. Last time these two teams played was last year, a game that came right down to the wire. Boise State was led by Derek Alston Jr. 27 points, a season high for him. Six of eight from downtown that affair. Broncos built up a double-digit lead, almost that one away. 61-59 was the final score in that affair as Boise State swept the season series last year, going the back-to-back -back because of COVID-19. And also on that note, too, an important thing for head coach Leon Rice, that victory, 214. It's the most, most in Boise State history now. It's incredible, the run he's had here. Absolutely outstanding. Right now, I know he's more focused on this game, being down 13-4. to UNLV, you look at the standings, you think, how is this a sixth-place team in the Mountain West? They're playing terrific right now. Key jam outside. Dagenhart launches a three off the mark. Front iron, no good. Defensive rebound by Nuga. Michael Nuga, six foot two and 180 pounds, a fifth year senior. UNLV has a couple of fifth year seniors, four seniors as a whole, six juniors. That'll be a turnover for Hamilton. Boise State trying to recapture what they did to open up this ball game, but UNLV right now with the advantage, 13-14. Kijab, he traveled? Yes, he did. Too many steps for Kijab. Another turnover for the Broncos. Been in a drought for about two and a half minutes, and there is Kevin Kruger, first-year head coach for UNLV. 
spirited group, he says, and it's one of the things with this program, despite the fact they have new personnel, they've kind of gone along as the season has, and they've worked well together. Yeah, you know, and, I, and Kevin Kruger, it's, it's, it's really cool that he's the head coach, right? He was assistant coach the last two years under T.J. Altsberger. He played at UNLV under his father, Lon Kruger before going on professionally playing and also as an assistant coach in other places. And he knows UNLV. He's got an opportunity to coach his alma mater, knows what works, what doesn't, what's the crowd looking for, what do the fans want to see. And I think he's done a good job. He's got 10 newcomers on this team, 10 new guys. And they're all starting to finally gel together in February, which is typical. So this team is really dangerous right now. Another drought for Boise State continuing on here. They have not hit a shot. UNLV on still in the 9-0 run, trying to make a 12-0 run. That one's an air ball by McCabe. He's being serenaded right now with the air ball chance. Schaefer back into the contest. Nearly four minutes of a drown for Boise State. Schaefer, fans getting restless here at Extra Mile Arena. Right. I like how they continue to go inside. Armish has got to have a game down inside. Look at that shot block. Wow. I see underneath contested a second time. We'll get that one to fall plus the foul. Muaka got him over the right arm. He's charged for the foul. I, I, I look at Armish. I know he's he misses first two shots down inside. This one got blocked, but he just keeps going after it, and that's what it's all about. I mean, when you think. Of Mladen Ormish, you think effort down inside. He's a tremendous defender down inside. A tremendous defender, especially in the pick and roll. But with that big, strong frame, frame 6'10", 240, 250, for him to continue having that ball of energy to be that effort guy down inside, I mean, that, that's just, I mean, look at his rebound numbers right there. One of the best in the league. And you have to be, a, if you're a rebounder like that, you're a guy that's got supreme uh, uh, hustle ability. Officials talking to Leon Rice right now. There's a little bit of blood on Kijab. One of that pause in the action. Boise State leading the all-time series with UNLV. 13 up, 10 down. As we mentioned, they swept the back-to-back -back series. They're eight and two, the Broncos are here under Leon Rice. Broncos 81% winning percentage here at Extra Mile Arena. Formerly known as Taco Bell Arena. Yes. Boise State University Pavilion also called. That's right. Doors open up back in 1982. We'll not put you on the spot and ask you how much gas cost at that time, but. Uh, Here in Boise? Yeah. In the city of trees. That's right. Well, I know what gas costs where, where we live. <laughs> About five bucks a gallon. What Leon Rice has done here with Boise State, not only consistently winning, but they've never had a, a losing season at home under his tenure. Armish completes the act on the three-point play, so it's 13-7 UNLV. No, I think that's good. I, I think that's good for Boise State to get going a little bit. They were trying to go down inside with Dagan Hart. I don't think they were scoring down inside with him. They were trying to go inside with Armish. Finally got a bucket and and one, and now you're hearing the crowd come alive a little bit because Boise State's offense has woken up. Here's Ham. That worked too much on the outside. Baker outside. Ham launches the three. Too strong on it. Bodies colliding. Controlled by Rice. And here comes Boise State. Rice off the dribble. Left hand. That shot's blocked at the rim, but a foul before the shot. So this is just a result of how Boise State likes to spread the floor open. And they bring the ball down the floor. Max Rice catches at the top of the key. And look, it's like the C parted. He's wide. There's nobody down there. He split two, three defenders, and it took the help side defender to come across and try to make a play on the ball. But that's just good headsy play from the coach's son. Baker called for the foul. And for Baker, it's his first. UNLV has not scored in their last three minutes. So it has been a game of runs and one of a few droughts. Free throw missed. UNLV, their last game, they hammered Air Force 78 to 44 on Military Appreciation Night. Also, $2 beers on that evening. Is that right? It was. How do you know? Did a little bit of homework. <laughs> a friend of a friend. Yeah, okay. 
I know Boise State was concerned about how well UNLV scores the ball, especially as of late as this group continues to gel together. Rocco with the three-pointer with shot clock winding down. That one never had a chance. Rebound by Lucas Milner. First time calling his number. Shaver, key jab. Uh, Blue's been relatively quiet so far. Dagenhart, right hand again. Yes, it's the same area that he scored his first points of the ball game. The freshman has Boise State within three. And look at him trying to wave the crowd to come alive. Baker. There's Webster for the first time. Drawn back iron. A foul on the court. Will not be a shooting foul, it appears to be. Justin Webster. Tyson Dagenhart on the other side for Boise State in a groove right now. Broncos are within three. 13-10 UNLV. UNLV with a three-point lead over Boise State. Broncos came into the season with 12 returners from last year. Three starters, all the Mount West Conference selections. But I think Tyson Dagenhart might have some honors coming his way as well. <laughs> I think Tyson Dagenhart's going to have a heck of a career in the Mountain West. You see the three-point shot, top of the key. He's so savvy, high IQ. You know, he's really good at receiving the pass in the fast break. He can make the passes as well. And I just think he's a guy that's an all-around player on both ends of the floor. He's just a freshman, still has some things to work on, but I think he's going to be terrific as his career progresses. Yeah, he crushed San Jose State the other night. 23 points, 9 of 14, shooting 3 of 5 from downtown. It was the sixth time this season he was made Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Week. I've never heard of such a thing. Not at all. Webster with one to go. Wow. The shot clock forces it down. Wow, they are really scoring a lot of points in the paint. That's I mean, they're doing a good job of getting down inside there. Nice pass. That's Underneath. a terrific pass. That, I love when you have a big guy passing to a big guy in a high-low setup like that. Milner to key job for two. And back to your point, Richie, UNLV's victory against Air Force, they beat him up in the paint. He had 30 points in the paint. Webster again for three. Got it. Uh, Quick five for Justin Webster. And UNLV back up by six. You know, I covered Justin Webster for his two years when he was at Hawaii. He was a team captain as a sophomore, co-captain. I've always loved how he's high energy. He's upbeat. And I think he's finally starting to find his way and his rhythm in his new surroundings in the UNLV uniform. It's paying off. You see it right there. Back to back. He scored his average in the last two plays. Well, there, no little error on that. Ball tumbling out of bounds, so does a running Rebel. Possession stays with Boise State. Broncos coming to this ball game, averaging 68 a clip. Yep. UNLV at 71 and a half, back to Webster. I like how Webster, he gets in the paint all the way under the rim, using the backboard as an extra defender. And then on the other end, you see the little backdoor pass. I like that. Milner to key jab, and give credit to key jab. Guys that move off the basketball that look for opportunities to cut to the basket oftentimes are rewarded rice with an air ball knocked it a bounce by key jab and boise state the one thing that's been impressive for them this season that matches their length is the size along the defensive line for them yielding 59 points a game that's incredible that's what i'm talking about 59 points per game there you know every team that we cover yeah. You look at the game notes and it says, hey, their record is such and such when they hold their opponent to 60 points or less. And it's usually like an ungodly number, undefeated or, you know, 13 and 1 or something like that. They average that. They hold their opponent under 60 points for the entire course of the season, not just in Mountain West play, but overall. And they played some pretty big teams in the non conference portion of the schedule, some really talented squads. But to your point, you've coached before at the collegiate level. So do you read much into that points per game, points against? Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, your goal, obviously, is to score more points than your opponent, right? Right. But, you know, you know, points are great. you got to score points to win. But really, defense and rebounding is what truly wins basketball games, right? Truly. Uh, so if you can hold, you know, 60 is kind of the benchmark. If you can hold teams under 60, you're doing pretty well. You've got to win a lot of games because you're probably going to score more than 60. Yeah, that ball stripped. As Hamtred going up, Najee Smith able to rip it out of him. Kuzmanovic. Key job. 
spinning against Ham. Look at the size advantage there for the big man. Southpaw going up. No. Rebound put back in nicely by Najee Smith. First look tonight for Najee. He's appeared in all 24 games this season, yet to start, averaging about 5.3 a clip. Got springy legs. He's got those fast twitch muscles on rebounds. With extra effort there. Four point lead for UNLV. Here's Hamilton. He's been quiet so far. He's got four, one of three from the field. Try to make it six. That won't get the roll. Smith at the rebound. I like how this offense just flows right into a ball screen and then they get into their motion stuff. A lot of teams just come up and they bounce the ball around, call play. They just get right in their offense. Oh, look at that. Lip out. Nice tap back in for the big man. It helps when you're six foot ten. You got 240 pounds to push people around. UNLV's lead is cut to two. It does, but to be able to get a tip on that ball and for it to drop in, that's a skill in and of itself. That's something big men practice. There's Webster trying to add to his five. UNLV has yet to score the last couple of minutes of action. Hamilton. Waves off a screen. The southpaw working nicely. Slow, methodical, and effective. You, you, you really can't stop him going to the basket. I mean, he gets into the paint. He's physical. You know, he, he's only 6'4", but he's lean. And he's got strength to him. And it's very difficult to keep him in front. Oh, wow. Monovich with some nice English to his game. And back and forth we go. Now, can UNLV play this kind of style where they go up and down with Boise State because they don't have the horses that the Broncos do. I'm not sure, sir. Yeah, I don't think they have the depth that you're talking about, but yeah. they've got the talent. There's no doubt about that. And for three front iron, no good. Boise State, the victory the other night against San Jose State, won by 16, 76 to 60. It was tight in the first half, but then they creeped away, leading by 14 at the end of 20 minutes. Armush, nice spin move. It's pretty. Broncos, Runner Rebels, 20 up. And the fans are on their feet at Extra Mile Arena. Webster had that one stolen nicely. Kuzmanovic with a great pick. And the Broncos looking for the advantage. Boise State has hit their last three shots. Crowd simmers down a little bit. Armish trying to give the Broncos the advantage, but the foul occurred, it looked like, before the shot occurred. But it's all Boise State They're on a run right now. Put it to UNLV. We're locked up right now at 20 apiece. Boise State, UNLV locked up at 20 apiece. Bryce Hamilton, what more can you say about him, Richie? A few weeks ago, he lit up Colorado State for 42 points. He was named Oscar Robertson National Player of the Week for that performance back on January the 30th. He did everything inside yeah. and out. Yeah, I mean, he's living up to his preseason all Mountain West selection that he was voted by the coaches and media. I mean, he does a good job. Like I said, he can stare down, hit a three-point shot. He can get to the basket. He's a physical driver, and he's, he's really good. Hunter Maldonado, how can we forget him? Both these players right here are certainly candidates for Mountain West Player of the Year. Yeah, Maldonado also carved up Colorado State for 35 points on January the 31st, so you feel bad for the Rams, but I tell you what, for Wyoming, Graham E.K., Hunter Maldonado, it's a powerful punch so far in the Mountain West Conference. Kuzmanovic now back to action we go. Boise State 0 for 4 from long range in this contest. Underneath Armush again. But one official indicated a foul for UNLV. That's the opposite control. side, they're going to call it a charge. Yeah, it's a player control foul on the drive to the basket. We'll go back to it. So right here, Max Rice yeah, does a great yep. job by the defender, Keyshawn Gilbert, Gilbert the freshman for UNLV. That's, I love it when you see young players get in there and getting dirty. That means you're going to have to, you have a guy for four years that's going to take a charge for your team. Hamilton crafty snaking his way to the hoop for two. It's just a matter of time before Bryce Hamilton can get going. Running Rebels back out by two. Well, he's a guy who's difficult to keep in front. You can't guard him as a shooter because he'll drive. You guard him as a driver, he's going to shoot. 
to pick your poison. I like key jab down inside trying to get dirty. Foul underneath. This will be against Gilbert again. Bryce Hamilton, a native of Pasadena, California, went to Pasadena High School. Leading the conference in scoring. There's E.K. Maldonado, David Roddy, and Orlando Robinson. Taylor Robinson had his hands full last week against Maldonado and E.K. The jab for three, nothing but the bottom of the net. First advantage of the night for Boise State. Well, that's how you know a player is ready for next level. And he caught the ball, had to gather his feet in the corner, and in motion, release the basketball. That's a big-time three-point shot by Kijak. Gilbert amongst the trees, spin move, no. Foul underneath. Let's see if this is on Kijab or not. Officials are going closer underneath and wait for confirmation on that. Boise State now one of five from downtown. And it will be a foul against UNLV. Foul's going to be on Gilbert. And it will be bonus time for Boise State, one and one. Boise State in that victory against San Jose State the other night on February the 5th. They led by as many as 14 points. They had 30 points off of turnovers in that ball game and 34 points in the paint. So it's not like they're traditionally worry about shooting from beyond the arc like maybe a Wyoming. But they worry about getting their shots inside the paint and outside. They're, they're pretty versatile. For Boise State? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're probably the most, um, you know, I've heard people say that they're the most balanced team in the league. Now, you know, Wyoming might have something to say about that. Some of the other teams may have something to say about that as well. But here's the replay. The balance in the sense that they can, they got great guard play, as you see right there. It's a little tussle between key jab. And who is our other player from UNLV there? Was that uh, Iwaku? Yeah. So they're going to check that out. But, yeah, I mean, they have great balance. They, they have uh, great guard play. You know, you talk about, you know, Marcus Shaver. I could go on and on. Emmanuel Acott's a 6'8 point guard for them as well. They got guys down inside. I mean, look what Armish has done. I mean, they were down big, and he went three or four from the field, sparked this team to tying, and now Boise State has the lead. And they got great length as well. And this is a team that is the best rebounding team in the league as far as rebound margin. They hold teams to under 60 points per game. The one weakness they have, the one weakness they have is where they're at right now. Of all the statistical categories on a stat sheet, the only area where they are lesser than their opponent is their free throw percentage. They're 62% from the stripe. So that's the one weakness that I think Boise State has just from statistics alone. Kijab goes one for two at the strike. 66% free throw shooter on the year. It's a two-point lead for Boise State, their largest of the night. And Cave back to work against Kuzmanovic, who's harassing him. Cave blows right past him. Spin move, a little bit of English on that shot. It drops. We're all tied up again at 24. And McCabe is a guy who's a, a great facilitator. He's an extension of the coach on the floor. But you leave him open outside, he can knock down. And clearly, he can penetrate and finish. Key jab, mismatch here. Nuga with a check in the back. A little forearm shiver, if you will, for Nuga. That's going to be his first personal foul. Back to the free throws for Abu Kijab. His dad, Sultan, was a former professional marathon swimmer back in the 1970s and 80s. Is so that right? The athletic blood, obviously, in his body used to swim 10 kilometers for competition. So bring that over in the metric system, just about 6.2 miles. But his father obviously wanted to do different things with them, brought them over to Ontario, Canada. Played collegiate ball at Oregon, transferred over after a couple years, and he's found a home in Boise. And you do know that Kijab's father actually ran for president in Sudan before moving to Canada. And then Kijab actually came to the U.S. in high school. And actually, his father came to see him play his first two collegiate games. Webster tied up, and they called for time. So McCabe called for the time to save the possession with 440 to play here in this first half. And we'll stay and hang out with you with Kevin Kruger. And Kevin was an engaging man. We talked to him a few hours ago during the shoot around and he said so many things about his ball club, but one in particular, he did not worry about the injury bug that's hit his team. We'll pause right now for the cause 26 24 Broncos with the advantage. We'll be back.
Back to the action here, Boise State with a two-point lead over UNLV. Broncos this season, 18 and five overall, nine and one in conference play. UNLV 14 and 10, six and five in the Mountain West Conference. Hamilton launches a three straight away, got it. The most impressive thing about Hamilton is that he can shoot these shots at 6'4 with a hand in his face. Kijev 6'7, had a hand up to contest, not right in his face, but he was contesting the shot, and he still makes it easy to drop in. It's one reason why I think a lot of people think that Bryce Hamilton is a future NBA player because he can knock down shots with longer arms around him. He can get to the basket. He does so many things well. Dagan Hart trying to return. Fired a little too strong on it. Webster with the rebound. Yeah, Hamilton's father played ball at UTEP. So the talent obviously runs through the blood. Started in every game up to this point except for one. Hamilton thought about the three closing minutes of this first half. UNLV, a sizable underdog. McCabe, that's a two-pointer on the way. He hit, hit it, 19-footer for Jordan McCabe. The West Virginia transfer, Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin as a high schooler. Mid-range, that shot oftentimes is never taken by players anymore. Off the bounce at that. Oh, yeah, here we go, down inside. Armish again, he's hacked, can't get it to fall. Boise State so far, 16 points in the paint compared to just 10 for UNLV. Immediate timeout on the court. And Jordan McCabe continues to push things for UNLV. They have a three-point advantage over the Broncos. UNLV with the advantage right now over Boise State, 29 to 26. We got some superheroes in the crowd. Batman, Batman and Buster yeah, yeah. Bronco. Buster had a uniform. He wears zero for football and 54 for basketball, but whatever. Oh, Not West Conference preseason polls. Where they're at, where we're at now, Richie, it's a phenomenal run for a couple of teams. One of them playing tonight in Boise State and, of course, Wyoming. That's why preseason polls are really garbage. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a, an estimation as to where everybody's going to be. But, you know, in this day and age, too, age two, you, you never really know who's going to be on your team. Uh, transfer portal. You, you don't know how those transfers are going to develop on your team. For example, UNLV. Ten newcomers on this team, nine transfers, eight are coming from other Division I schools. And you never know how those players are going to develop, how they're going to mold together. This UNLV squad right now is way better than they were just a couple of months ago. And despite their record, yes, they're one game over 500 in conference play. This is this UNLV team has a chance to be one of the upper echelon teams in the conference here in the last month of the season. And so that was part of the reason why I asked you about evaluating as a coach, because the record says one thing, the analytics might yeah. be another thing. Right. Hamilton, beautiful at the cup for two. But I will tell you, UNLV, you know, obviously they're missing Donovan Williams. That's 17 points per game in Mountain West play, 14 overall. Leon Rice calling but, for time. You know, Bryce Hamilton now with 13 points for UNLV. They've got to find some other areas to score from. As you see, he's so good. He loves that spin move. He'll drive to the basket and finish. He loves the spin move down inside. He loves the stare down three-point shots as well. So, I mean, he's a terrific player. Yeah. One of the things with Boise State tonight, why would be a challenge going into a ball game like this? Not just because it's a conference foe, but also they're playing a little shorthanded. Emmanuel Acott not playing tonight. He did not play against San Jose State. He tweaked his knee. Now, it's not like UNLV is going to have a pity party for them. They have a bu bunch of guys that have been injured and banged up all year. But that's the one area if you're a Bron Boise State fan, you have to worry about once you get into the conference tournament and then possibly the NCAAs, where does your offense come from? Well, it's next man up mentality, right? I mean, I, like we were talking about before, we were speaking on this a little bit. Marcus Shaver, I think, is a player that can really go off. I, I think he's taken less shots since he's been at Boise State because there's so much more talent around him than he had at Portland, uh, where he was a two-time all-conference guy in his first two years at Portland. But, you know, now he's got a chance to, to get up some more shots. But there's a lot of guys that can score. It, it's just it's just next man up. You've got to find other opportunities. You're going to have more shot opportunities. You've just got to make the best of them. This is one of the guys that can go off. Dagan Hart. Kujab. Six to go in the shot clock. Kujab alert about it. Being patient. Three, two, and one. Let's it fly. No, short on it. Webster there underneath. And Nuga controls it. Found 2.15 to play in this first half. Hamilton, nice move at the rack. No, too strong on it. Dagan Hart with the rebound, controlling it. Here comes Shaver again. Good transition defense, though, for UNLV. They have not given up anything cheap tonight for Boise State. Hijab thought about the three, then pulled it anyway. 
Off the mark, Kuzmanovic, second chance opportunity here. Three-pointer by Shaver this time, no good either. They're one for eight from long range. Coming in this ball game, Boise State 33% from beyond the arc. So they've gone relatively flat. They haven't scored in the last four minutes plus. Well, I like how UNLV is now walking the ball up the floor, you know, just trying to regain control here before they go into the break and try to see if they can get a, a positive possession here. The shot clock's starting to wind down. Nice shot fake. Five to go on it. McCabe head up all the way. Corner three on the way by Nuga. No, Shaver. And Boise State. See how they close out this half. Final 65 seconds. 0 for 4. Last I like four. this pick and pop. That's terrific right there by Dagenhart. Too strong on it. Now 1 for 9. Talk about the iron unkind for Boise State. So, so guys like Dagenhart, who shoots so well from behind the arc, 43%. Uh, you know, it, it's it's such a weapon to have a guy like him that can post this back to the basket and score. He does have the capable of driving the basketball, but then to be able to set ball screens. And Boise State sets ball screens. So to be able to pop out after setting a ball screen, and you might have a bigger guy on you. You might have a 6'10 guy on you that doesn't want to go out there and guard the perimeter. Oftentimes, you're going to get wide open looks as a result. Hamilton looking for 16. Shooters touch, they say. Bryce Hamilton from long range. He's 6 of 10 from the field. And UNLV with a seven-point lead. Shaver trying to cut into it. Yes. Shaver stopping the bleeding for Boise State. Their first field goal. Last two and a half minutes. It's a five-point lead for UNLV. And they'll hold for the final shot. Yeah, expect a ball screen. Somewhere between the five and ten seconds here on the clock. Rebel, running Rebels have won three of their last four games. Here it is. Just two and five on the road. Hamilton, three to go, two to go. With one second to go in this first half, Bryce Hamilton has certainly stolen the show. On the road, UNLV playing with a great deal of confidence. Heading into the halftime locker room, they have the advantage right now over Boise State, 36 to 29. UNLV is talented. They've been a bit inconsistent throughout the year, but they have been playing much, much better as of late. They've won three of four, and here they are on the road with the team tied for first place in Boise State. With 20 more minutes, I'd like to see what kind of changes are made in the locker room for Boise State. Yeah, what more can you say, though? Bryce Hamilton leading the charge for UNLV. 18 points so far, 7-11 from the field, and 3-3 from downtown. Runner Rebels out in front, 36-29. Welcome back on the campus of Boise State. It's all UNLV so far, 36 to 29. I'm with Richie Schuler, I'm David Gascon. Richie, it's been all Bryce Hamilton so far. Completely dominated the game. He's controlled it. 18 points. He's 7 of 11 from the field, and he's made three three-point shots. So much attention on him. It also leaves his teammates open on the perimeter or down inside. It's just incredible because he's knocking these shots down with hands in his faces, and I've seen it so long. He loves to spin move in the paint. First half stats in this thing, UNLV with the advantage right now, 36 to 29. Biggest reason for that, you see it right in the red. Five for 12 downtown for UNLV, a one for nine for Boise State. In Boise State, it, obviously they're they're doing a great job in the paint. They're scoring down inside. They're struggling from the outside. UNLV just riding the coattails of Bryce Hamilton. He has 18 of those 36 points, 50% of their offense. He's been an outstanding, and that's obviously something that they want to continue. Keep feeding it to the beast. Let him go to work. Boise State's got to do a good job of trying to slow him down because there's only a handful of other players that have scored for UNLV and none more than five points. Largest deficit this season for Boise State. Previous high was six against Ole Miss and Utah State. They won both of those contests. Well, I stand corrected. Nuga with seven points. Jordan McCabe with six. But that's it. Your second leading scorer has seven points. So a lot of potential here. A whole new half. 
We'll see if Boise State can get a little hotter from the outside and slow down UNLV's hot streak. But, man, are the Runner Rebels looking good or what? I mean, they're looking really good here in Boise tonight. Yeah, we're talking so much about Emmanuel Acott not being in the game this evening, not in the starting lineup at all. Donovan Williams not suiting up for UNLV. Well, I like this. UNLV comes out here, second half, first possession. They got a little zone going, 3-2, 1-2-2. Dagenhart with a nice ball fake. First points of the second half go to Boise State. And, and that's how you beat a zone, right? You go short corners and high posts for your big guys. Well, if you're on the perimeter, you look to attack those gaps. And look, Boise State doing the same thing. Look, chess pieces are moving. They're going 2-3 zone, protecting the inside with those three big bodies down low. Both these teams flexed a little bit of zone defense in the previous affairs. Hamilton, the spin move, looking for 20. No, he's stuck on 18 right now. Ramesh with a rebound. Here comes Shaver. I want to stay, see who sticks with the zone, though. Or is it just a one possession thing? Say, so, well, UNLV just did it one possession. Now they go straight to man to man. So just try to do a little something, something to throw them off. Now, will Boise State stick in there 2 3 on the other end? Well, we shall see. Ramesh taking his time with 10 to go in the shot clock. A sizable advantage over Ham. Rice thought about the three with five to go. Rice with three to go. We'll have to hurry up with it. A prayer. Got the bounce to fall. Coach Leon Rice trying to get his team to pressure up after the made shot. No panic from Hamilton. So, see, this is interesting now. Boise State's going to stick with the 2 3. They probably feel this is the best way to slow down Bryce Hamilton. Look at that. Poor pass picked off. Gilbert with the giveaway. Key jam, another two. Yes. Quick 6 0 run for Boise State to open up this second half. And the lead for UNLV is down to one. <laughs> Hamilton trying to silence the faithful here, and he does for a brief moment. Hamilton now with 20, leading all scores in this affair. Twenty points in twenty minutes. And Shaver with the giveaway. Hamilton, 13 20 mm. point performances this season. It's incredible, isn't it? Most in the Mountain West. <laughs> He's got the five 30 point games. He has 42 against Colorado State in January. Got three, four straight possessions of zone for Boise State. Now here they're going. Back to man to man. So what you're, try, what you're trying to do is they're trying to make UNLV think. Ham underneath on the reverse. Tough for him to complete it. I think that pass is a little bit late. He jabbed through some traffic. Shot will not count. Maybe if it was in the NBA. Probably if it was in the NBA, but right. not here. <laughs> but you know, he's a driver now. He's a slasher. You, you saw he did a little uh, Euro step just a moment ago. Now he gets the ball. He splits two defenders. He's six seven, like two twenty five. Look at the look at what he can do with his body. Inside out move, crossover, and splits two, going inside the paint. Hamilton, That's talent. Hamilton called for the foul. Rice launching a three, short on it. Hamilton skies up for the rebound. Hamilton now with four boards to go with his twenty points. Eight of thirteen from the field and three for three from distance. Hamilton going up. Offensive foul against him. It's the second foul of the game. And a rare turnover tonight for UNLV. Look, three defenders. Key jab, Armish, and at the end, it's Dagenhart who ends up taking the charge. It took three defenders to stop the one player who scored 20 points for UNLV and Hamilton. Speaking of 20 points, Hamilton was one of four players the other night against Air Force to be in double digit scoring. There's nobody even close to double digits for UNLV outside of Hamilton. Dagenhart with the left, no. Armish oh. climbs up, oh. completes it. Oh, the power. It's a little banged up. But look how fast UNLV is down the floor. Three seconds went off the shot clock between Armish's shot down inside, Crowell feels like he got fouled, and them UNLV getting down by the basket. Look how fast they are. Now look, this is Dagenhart misses the shot. Armish with a terrific rebound, and he goes up strong. And everybody thought he got hit on the shot. I think he bumped him on the rebound before he even went up with the shot. Officials right now are discussing it. 
Kevin Kruger looks like one of the players for UNLV being attended to right now. Vern Harris, Tony Padilla, and Mike Cyphers, excuse me, are the officials tonight. Hamilton does have some blood across his face. I want to see where it came from. It didn't come on the shot. I, I know the crowd was upset, thought that he had got fouled, and it should have been an and one. But from that replay a moment ago that we just saw, David, I don't think it was on the shot. I think it's when he rebounded the basketball. It was a great rebound, man. And he collected himself and brought himself down. And I think at that point in time, let's see, he catches here. Okay, so it's on the rebound. It was maybe right there, or was it, did he hit? I think it was right before that. Right before that, on the rebound, he had got clocked in the head, I think. Couldn't tell quite from that angle. A little backcourt here. Here's Webster back in the affair. McCabe, who was good in the first half, six points, three assists. Taking care of the basketball. Another offensive foul. Wow, that's three fouls now on Hamilton. Two charges in the last two minutes. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's a big blow for UNLV. And you see Kijab right there having a good laugh with them, but I promise you well, this, Hamilton's it. smile is not all okay. fun in games. Look, you're right, David, and that's... Kijab did a really good job of keeping him in front. You got to give a lot of credit to, credit to Kijab. Kept him in front. Hamilton tried to create space by using his forearm, and it's a right call. That's a player control foul. You know, there's points in a game where you feel like the momentum either turns one way or the other. And this will be a mark with 16-10 to play in the contest. Kijab goes up, has it ripped out of his hands. Iwaku John with him. He's called for attack. Oh, that's mind-blowing. That's huge because there was a layup on the other end for Nuga. That takes, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's a bad call. What I'm saying is if that technical foul is warranted, which it likely is because the officials right there and heard whatever was said, Could that took away, that is critical. That just took away two points for you and LV. Should almost be upset at themselves. Yeah, you saw, was that Iwako that it was called on? It looked like Iwako had maybe turned around and said something. The official caught wind of it. But that, uh, if that's who it was, he just took away a basket from his own team. Yeah, he's called for the tech. Shaver will take the technical foul. Free throws for him, 75% on the season. And I go back to the moments in games like this because last week against Utah State, UNLV was in a tight affair with the Aggies. And then in the second half, Utah State won a 16-0 run, and they blew him out. And UNLV never recovered. Hamilton went cold, and the rest was history. Yeah, I saw it right there. Did you see it right there? Yeah. That was Iwako. He turned around and said something. Technical foul is warranted, but it's critical because he took away a basket from his own team. And Boise State now with the lead. Nuga trying to finish. No, Dagenhart with the rebound. Rice. Almost a double dribble. Shaver behind the screen for three. Got it. Fantastic individual move by Shaver. A little left hand in and out. Create a little space and knock down the three-point shot off the bounce. Hands are rowdy. Ham. Nuga. Good ball fake for Nuga, attacking, piercing the defense for two. It's so good. That shot fake created everything. It got his defender in the air, got him to go middle, and then it's just individual effort. Foul's going to be on Webster. An all Marcus Shaver here in the second half for Boise State. Nice pull from downtown. Broncos up by two. Broncos in front of the Runner Rebels, 42-40. Speaking of running, we were walking a little bit today. Shoot-arounds typically done indoors, and Richie and I had a chance to speak with head coach Leon Rice at Boise State, and of course he brought some of his friends along the way too. <laughs> That's Stella and Zara. The one on the left, the lighter dog, usually comes to practices, usually goes to shoot-arounds, and she's running around the arena, and she's part of the team huddle. But you know what? They've been on a streak, so they haven't been taking her. You can't, can't mess up the superstition, right? But, uh, you know, Coach Leon Rice is so uh, passionate about his two dogs. And uh, Zara is the oldest one. 
Uh, the youngest one, rather, came from his son. Stella's been around a little bit longer, and I'd love the story how he got Stella from the pound high energy dog and they said hey coach leon rice your family is perfect for stella they sent her if i'm remembering the story right sent her to to get trained by inmates at a prison got her back and she was well trained and, and man those are just two incredible dogs right delightful foul underneath by nuga that's for nuga's second personal foul it's now 16 fouls for unlv just one for boise state Broncos have not had a sizable lead like the Runner Rebels have. Up to seven and eight. Broncos all of four. The Boise State right now shooting 47% from the field. Key Jam launches a three. No. Controlled nicely by Milwaukee. You know what's funny about that Stella and Zara story, though? What's that? Stella. Is Coach Leon Rice's former boss's dog's name as well. You know who that is? Who's that? Mark Few at Gonzaga. Good friends. Both have a dog named Stella. I'm going to go get me a dog and name her Stella as well. Ham with eight to go. Nuga underneath. That's a tough pass. It got back to him. Hamilton with three to go in the shot clock. That one rims in and out. Tough break for him. Loose ball controlled by Kijak. That comes. Oh, wow. Boise State. Beautiful bounce pass by Shaver. Oh. Dagan Hart, the recipient. That might be the best pass I've seen all season. That was unreal. A bounce pass thrown like a baseball pass and splitting traffic, threading the needle, the ball on a silver platter. That was incredible. Hamilton oh. quiets everyone in the arena. Threes up for Bryce Hamilton. <laughs> 23 and counting. Plus, potentially a scar. What an excellent player. I hope NBA scouts are watching. The things that he can do on the floor. Key jab quickly done. Volleyed around, controlled on the deck. Armush outside. Rice, Dagenhart. Dagenhart into the lane. Back iron. He'll be called for the push. He knew it, too. Just keep coming at you. The greatest shot in basketball. The kick out three-point shot. Max Rice dumped it back off to a teammate. And eventually, Dagenhart gets fouled down inside. You know, we'll see some some passing here in the next couple of days. How about that pass, man? That pass by Shaver. Remember Magic Johnson used to make passes like that in the full court? Not even looking. Really? Bounce pass like that? Not yeah, looking. It's showtime, man. You spent more time in L.A. than I did. Wow. <laughs> Maybe. 13-18 oh, to play in this ball game. You know, we talk about Marcus Shaver being a great scorer. We don't spend enough time talking about his passing ability. Cabe working the primers UNLV Hamilton trying to fend off key jab attacking one on two he goes up he's fouled he hits the deck looks like this foul is gonna be on Dagenhart well, that's what makes him great though yes he can shoot the basketball yes he can do things but he just drove the ball against two six foot seven defenders back to Hamilton's and key jab and also in Dagenhart pushed it right to him Forty four forty three Boise State with the advantage. Now tied up at forty four. Thirteen minutes to play in regulation. Hamilton with twenty four. Only player for UNLV in double digit scoring. Shaver straight away. No. Ajay Smith underneath the rebound. Key jab again. Key job trying to work underneath. Foul occurred before the shot. It will not count. Boy, I tell you, if you're on either one of these teams, you better by now in February be able to guard the pick and roll. Because both these teams set a lot of ball screens. 17 fouls for UNLV, so it's one and one from here and out for Boise State. At least the bonus situation. Key jab. Disappointing end to last season for him. Torn labrum in the last game of the regular season. Allowed him to come back for a brand new year. Yeah, it was against uh, was that against Fresno State, I believe, maybe. He missed the Mountain West tournament. He missed the NIT. 
And then, you know, at the same time, Max Rice, he, he broke his foot in the Mountain West tournament. So to, yeah. to finish out the season, they were without Kijab and Max Rice. We both had season ending injuries right there towards the end of the year. Kijab against San Jose State had 18 points. It was a modest night for him in 34 minutes. Boise State back up by two, 46 to 44. You see how they're switching their defenses? Ham in the corner for three, money. I, you know, Boise State's trying to confuse you and LV. They're trying to slow them down, make them think about what they're going to have to do on offense, try to take their instincts away, try to take their uh, athleticism out by switching those defenses up. Amish on the base, that's a turnover for Boise State. There's six of the contest. See, so it's a 2-3 zone. The shot fake got two defenders out of defensive position, and it left a wide-open shooter in the corner. The power of the shot fake, I say it all the time, it's the most underused fundamental in all of basketball, and it's so dangerous and effective. Back the other way. Ham, back-to-back -back triples. No, too strong this time. Kuzmanovic with the rebound. Back comes Boise State. Broncos trying to get back to 20 wins. The ninth time under head coach Leon Rice. Whistle and a foul on the shot. Kuzmanovic will have a couple free throws heading his way. But Boise State on the move. They're down by one right now, 47 to 46 to UNLV. We'll be back. Diciest time of the regular season, UNLV leading Boise State 47 to 46. And I bring that up, Richie, because Matt West in that top 60 rankings, every game, every W is critical from here on out. No doubt. No doubt about it. I mean, the Mountain West has a chance to get three, four teams in the NCAA tournament. And it's great. It, it, Utah State got beat this evening by Nevada. New Mexico beat Northern New Mexico. Fresno State and Colorado State played earlier today as well. Fresno State got bullied by the Rams, 65 to 50. David Roddy again, 21 points in that contest. Orlando Robinson tried to do all he could for the Bulldogs, had 24 in a losing cause. You know, some interesting statistics here. You know, V's got a higher field goal percentage than Boise State. They also had a halftime lead. They're 13 and one when holding a halftime lead, when they held a halftime lead rather, and they're 12 and one when they finished the game with a higher field goal percentage. So. You know, statistics would say UNLV has got a great chance of coming out here with the victory on the road and finishing strong in the last 11 minutes. Hamilton's pass, a dangerous one. Smith nearly picked it off. And running Rebels this season, their scoring margins plus five. For Boise State, plus nine. Well, it's, it's important for UNLV, and I, I know this is a topic for them. I know it's something they talk about, finishing the games. And the last time they had a road game last week, they played at Utah State. It was a really close game until... Maybe the second half of the second half, so maybe the last 10 minutes of the game, they kind of fell off and couldn't score the basketball. They've got to stay consistent. Hamilton attacking his shot was blocked underneath. It might have been by Smith, and that'll be a shot clock violation. I beg your pardon. Kijab was the one that blocked the shot. But Ke Hamilton trying to work quickly with the shot clock winding down. I, I love Kijab's defense, right? He got blown by there, but he stayed with it, stayed true and recovered and blocked the shot. And every coach in America wants to have a 30-second violation on the other team. That just tells you that you're playing 36, 30 seconds of terrific, great defense. Nice cut by Dagan Hardy goes up. He's found the process of shooting. From Spokane, Washington, went to Mount Spokane High School, making his 18th start of the season in 24 games. From the free throw line, nearly 80%. 23 points, a career high against San Jose State the other night in 34 minutes. So the accolades will come to Kijab and Emmanuel Acott, and then all of a sudden Tyson Dagenhart comes out of nowhere. As you see right there, six times this year he's been named Mountain West Freshman of the Week. He's With him in the lineup, Boise State is 15-2 and two overall. They've won 15 of their last 16. The 15-2 and two overall with him in the lineup. He does it on both ends of the floor. And like I said, defensively, I think he's underrated. McCabe. 
And was open. And now they get him the rock. Eight to go in the shot clock. Looking for McCabe again. Trying to navigate. Just behind the free throw line. Short on it. Now comes Shaver. They're off and running. Broncos look to attack with Marcus Shaver for two. Advantage back up to three, 50 to 47. Fans back on their feet. McCabe looking for the tie, did not get it. Shaver again, another rebound. Shaver's got 11 points so far. He jabbed with 12 to lead Boise State. Bryce Hamilton leading all scores with 24. Boise State, though, shooting 18 of 40 from the field. Shaver had it ripped, but he was fouled by McCabe, and McCabe knew it. I'll tell you, Shaver is crafty, man. He can shoot it. He can get to the basket. He's got great dribble moves. This time, he just takes it from the wing, splits traffic, and goes middle. Bad things happen to the defense if you allow the offense to go middle. Now, there's different philosophies on that from different coaches, but more often than not, I truly believe if an offensive player can drive middle from the wing, they're probably going to score, have a great shot at the basket in doing so. Shaver from Phoenix, Arizona, transferred from Portland against San Jose State. He had 14 points, 4 of 11 from the field, 2 of 7 from deep in 33 minutes. Honorable mention in the All-Mountain West Conference last season. Played in all 25 games for these Broncos. He's played at two schools. And he's been all-conference in every place. And in every year, I should say. Three years. Five-point lead for the home team. It's not how they started, but how they're trying to close. 6-0 run for Boise State. Here comes their playmaker. Hamilton with six to go. A little bit of a push shot. Don't matter. He rattles it through the cylinder. And a timeout for UNLV with 9.23 to play here in regulation. He's amazing. I mean, he is amazing. Hamilton. What a game he's having right now. 26 points on 10 of 17. They're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at him, and he's still able to get buckets over outstretched arms. Back inside Extra Mile Arena, Boise State with a three-point lead over UNLV. Speaking of three, might have some field goals in a couple of days, Richie oh. Schuler. Super Bowl 56 in Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium and some notable figures for the Mountain West Conference. Kevin O'Connell, Eric Weddle at the bottom. Eric Weddle is actually going to wear the green sticker on the back of his helmet. He'll be calling the plays defensively for the Los Angeles Rams on Sunday. I'm offended. Why wouldn't you talk about the two Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals? I'm from Cincinnati. Logan Wilson does the exact same thing for the Bengals. And how about my Hude fellow brothers in Cincinnati? who are going to be rooting for the Bengals in Los Angeles this weekend. Smith goes up and he's fouled. I, You're not going to root for the Bengals? I'm not going to say anything at this moment. I will, I will plead the fifth. I, you know, I've traveled across the country three times to see all their playoff games. Yeah. And I'm going to the Super Bowl on Sunday because it's right there where I live. Makes sense. We've got to see a Cincinnati Bengals team win. It would be one of the best stories in history, but they're legit, man. They're, they're a lot like UNLV. They have peaked at the end of the season, and now they're at the Super Bowl. Eric Weddle playing for Utah when they were in the Mountain West Conference. Ajay Smith with the second free throw. Rams right now, a little bit of a favorite in that ball game, but we'll see what happens Sunday afternoon into the nighttime from Los Angeles. But here tonight in Boise, Broncos and Runner Rebels in a tight one. With UNLV, you got Bryce Hamilton, 26 of the team's 49 points. They're doing everything they can, changing defenses, throwing two guys at them. They just can't stop them. Nice rebound by Smith. Shaver, no numbers, though, three on four. Shaver, don't matter anyway. Front iron, Hamilton rebound. You know, Boise State's winning this game because they're out rebounding UNLV. They're getting a lot of points in the paint. The physicality has been difficult on UNLV's defense. McCabe for three. Money. Jordan McCabe is 35% from long range. Hits that three. Runner Rebels within two. They just need a little bit of support for Bryce Hamilton. I'll tell you that much. Hamilton with the 26. 
And nobody else in double digit scoring just yet. McCabe has nine. McCabe and Nuga with nine apiece. Boise State slowing things down. His key jab back to work. Four to go, three to go. Smith will have to hurry. Right hand shot is hammered out by Ham. I'm going to call a shot clock violation, so they're not even going to get the ball back. What a possession by UNLV. Assistant coaches jumping off off the bench, giving high fives. This is great. Help side defense at its best. Look at the long outstretched arms. Incredible block shot. UNLV led by seven at the end of the first half, and the, the script was flipped because of this man, Marcus Shaver. Yeah, he's doing a great job. He's four of eight. It's a one three-point shot he knocked down there, but he's getting to the basket. He's a big part of the reason why Boise State has 30, 30 points in the paint and then threading the needle, man. That was an incredible pass. But, you know, he's, he, he causes a lot of problems for the defense because he's difficult to keep in front. All right, and if you can't keep a guy in front, that means they're going to get in the paint. And that's an offensive paint touch for the offense, and it opens up shots for everybody else if he doesn't have something. A four of eight from the field, he has been solid all the way around. And, uh, I mean, his change of pace and the way he's able to go from slow to fast and pull it back out and confuse the defense and make it difficult on him, that has been uh, one of his biggest assets tonight. Hamilton into the corner, McCabe. Shaver's out for a moment. Walker trying to set the screen. No look pass is a poor one by McCabe. Careless turnover for UNLV. It's their tenth of the affair. Dagenhart straight away. Coverage was late. He made him pay. A seven-point deficit has now turned into a five-point lead for the home oh. team. Dagenhart, a nice pick. Looked like he was fouled. He'll go up. Call travel. Called for travel. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, neither official was on par with Dagenhart, and he was fouled. He was fouled probably before he traveled. But, yes, it's two straight turnovers in a row for UNLV. Let's just get that out there first. It, it did appear that maybe he was fouled. Hard to see from that angle. But he did travel now. He did travel. Mm -hmm. Waka will come in. He's back into the contest. Fans a little restless right now, and deservedly so. Ham will sit for a minute. He's getting some medical treatment as we speak. Monroe off the screen. Here's McCabe. Waka for two. Short on it. Not enough lift. Rice with the rebound. Six and a half to go. Dagenhart again. Waiting ball fake once and he goes up anyway. Three defenders on him and it didn't matter for the freshman. 13 points, six of 11 from the field. Hamilton no, but he's fouled. Hard to hear the officials from where we're at. This building holds about 12,000 plus. And I'll tell you what, when this place gets jumping, it's hard to play in. Absolutely. It's a great home advantage, and uh, Leon Rice had a lot of success here in this building. Now, UNLV has to start finding other people to help score the basketball. Look, Hamilton's got 26, 50% of their scoring, 26 of their 50, 27 of their 53 now. So Hamilton is a great player. We know that, you know, but we've seen Nuga score a little bit, McCabe. But at the same time, I say that he keeps being productive. He's not ball hogging. He's 10 right. of 18 from the field. 28 points. And he's playing in rhythm. He's not out of sequence at all. Yeah, he's, he's a special, special player. Flirted with the NBA draft a year ago. Got some reviews. Knew what he had to work on. And here he is for his senior year. And he's having a great one at that. I mean, he is one of the best individual talents in this entire conference. First team all Mountain West Conference as a sophomore is the first time it happened for UNLV in seven years. Key jab with three to go. High arcing. No. Tapped. Controlled. Hamilton has it. I think he might have traveled and so did about 9,000 people in here. Might have been a kick or a trip. a trip. That's a trip. It could have been both. Yeah. No, that's a trip. So if you're UNLV, you're trying to find ways to score, right? 
Uh, you're going to keep attacking the basket. You're going to keep looking to shoot outside. Now, if you're Boise State, you're, you're, you're trying to find a way to get some more consecutive stops. They, they did get two steals in consecutive possessions a few moments ago. See if you can extend this lead a little bit. You kind of have UNLV back on their heels. McCabe looking for somebody open. Waco on the opposite end with five to go. It's a bad possession here. Hamilton trying to bail him out. A prayer not answered. Waco climbs the ladder for a rebound. He's tied up. Possession arrow stays with UNLV, but they're going to say a foul instead. Oh, my. But I like it. Crowd doesn't like it. Things are going against Boise State, but you got five players in white uniforms with their arms around each other saying, next play, let's focus forward. Can't do anything about the past. Max Rice called for the foul. UNLV in a drought. They have not hit a shot in the last three minutes and 15 seconds. Never mind all that. Really? A 30 piece. Dude has 30 and he's not done yet. Bryce Hamilton is trying to carry the entire state of Nevada to a victory here tonight. Uh, you mentioned earlier how he scored 42 at Colorado State with that upset win. He jabbed, he's fouled before the shot occurred. Six times now this season that Bryce Hamilton has hit the 30 point mark. Right, so now I think he knows he's got to have a big game to have a big upset on the road. With 42 against Colorado State, 30 here. And his sixth 30 point game of the season with that shot right there. Waco fouls out, so his night is over with. Key jab at the stripe, 66% on the year. Five of six up to this point, now make it six of seven. And if you're Boise State, you have to keep winning because they're tied right now in the conference standings with Wyoming. Broncos have done that. They went 14 up and nobody got to them except for Wyoming in overtime. So they've won 15 of their last 16 games. But it's been impressive, even with the pressure put on by the Cowboys from Wyoming. Is this all Hamilton from here on out? I don't see why they'd go anywhere else. He's the focal point. Everybody else's support. Like this right here. That's a support shot. Nugo left alone for three. No. Rebound, though, controlled nicely. Mwaka. Hamilton, the step back three. No. Front iron. So he's the first person to touch the ball on most every possession. And right now he's got the ball in his hands a lot down the stretch. And if they take him away, then he's looking for an open teammate. So much attention on him. Not a bad strategy. Dagenhart elevates three. No, no legs. Grabs his miss. Shaver trying to extend the advantage. Nothing on that. Tire bench at Boise State says it was blocked and it was deflected. Barn burner here. On the campus of Boise State, Broncos with a four-point lead don't go anywhere. Bryce Hamilton for UNLB has been as good as advertised the night, Richie. 30 points on the night. Four of eight from the three-point arc. 11 of 21 overall from the field. Look, you take away the drive, he's going to shoot that shot. He loves the spin move in the paint. Take away his drive, he's going to shoot a three. Take away a three, he might take it all the way to the basket. He has more points than the rest of the team. The rest of the team only has 26. Now, now part of this is because he's their leading scorer, their second leading scorer. The only other player, Donovan Williams, to average double figures for them yeah. is not playing tonight. Their third leading scorer averages eight and a half. So they don't have any other double-digit scores on the season except for him right now on the floor. Catch and shoot for three is an air ball by Shaver. Yeah, Royce Ham, the third leading scorer on the squad, 8.6 to be exact. He scored 12 the other night against Air Force, but has done nothing offensively for the Renner Rebels this evening. Three points in 24 minutes. He's got six rebounds. Yeah, on a block. I mean, he's doing that. He's doing great on that end of the floor. But they need some kind of complimentary piece for this man. Hamilton, again, he's fouled in the process of shooting. And two more free throws. He's so sneaky with the way he gets his shots up. And he's got a great wingspan. So, yeah, he's only six foot four. Seems like he's taller than that when he's releasing the basketball. Big thanks tonight to Doug Marino, our producer on site, our director, Erica Ferrero, and also Teresa Beeler working the stats for us. And our entire FS1 crew here on the campus of Boise State in Boise, Idaho.
Temperatures today are right around 45 degrees and a clear day out. Now they've gotten a little bit colder, but big thanks to our entire crew. Could not have done this game without you guys. Hamilton misses the second free throw. That's a huge miss. Dagenhart and a rare blown opportunity for Hamilton. He goes 0 for 2 on the trip. Missed opportunities. A one blemish for Hamilton so far. Four of seven at the strike. Shaver trying to create key jab oh. extension. No, another air ball. Yeah, he, he shot with his arms, not with his legs. Shaver this time. No. Big Hamilton, or excuse me, Ham, excuse me, climbs it, gets the rebound, and back comes UNLV. They're down by four. Have not scored in the last couple of minutes. Hamilton. 32 on the way. No, that one draws nothing but glass, no iron. So some bad shooting last minute, maybe minute and a half. I like this, Marcus Shaver. Relaxing. No. Stop the helter skelter. Get your team organized. Slow it down just a little bit. Regain control. Key jab looks at the shot clock. It reads at five. And the one picked by McCabe. Off and running goes UNLV. Four on two, four on three. Nuga, corner three on the way. Book it. That's what they needed. That's what they needed. Now, only the second player for UNLV tonight to score double figures. That gives him 12. But Nuga, not too bad now. Two three-pointers on the night. It's all because for McCabe right here, a little pass fake to the middle. Leaves Nuga wide open for the three-point shot. I mean, he basically had a chance to have a cup of coffee there. He's so open. Nuga is just the first player outside of Bryce Hamilton to eclipse 10 points in the evening. He's got 12, 5 of 10 from the field, 2 of 6 from downtown. And that's the alarming part. Not the score for Boise State necessarily, but what they've done from long range. 3 of 19 from downtown this ball game, 16%. Not like they've relied on the 3, but that has certainly hurt them along the way. All right. So both teams in the bonus right now. A lot of this game is going to come down to knocking down free throws. You know, we talked about Boise earlier. They're 62% from the stripe. It's not great. UNLV, really good. 73% from the free throw line. But both teams, every time they get fouled, unless it's offensive, every time they get fouled, you're going to have a shot at the free throw line. And I like how UNLV is going to pick up about three-quarter court, not make it easy on Boise State. Trying to get Acott down inside. Excuse me, key jab. Nice oh, fake. Nice ball fake going up with the stuff. It was blocked. No, it was going to be fouled by Ham. Not a shooting foul. Yeah, key jab. Oh, I'm sorry. Armour sh showing some power, did he not? That would have brought the house down. Look at this. It's a little fake right there. One dribble goes off two feet. <laughs> Can you imagine mm. if he hammered that home? Oh, they are going to call. Okay. I thought the official said not shooting. All right. Yeah, Ham called for the foul. And for Ham, that's his third personal foul. Walko is already fouled out. Three for Hamilton, three for Ham. Nobody else in, in danger. How much with the free throw? It's good. So you have four players so far for Boise State in double digit scoring. Dagenhart, Shaver, and Kijab with 13 apiece. Okay, Armish. so go ahead. Yeah. Armish with 11 trying to make it 12, and he does. Okay. Yeah. UNLV, if I'm UNLV, I'm trying to run things that spread the floor so I can look to attack. You attack, oftentimes you get to the strike. Back to Hamilton with 30. There Hamilton go. at the rack, and he finishes. Beautiful spin move by Bryce Hamilton. 32 points in the ninth. It's a great attack. It's what he does, spin move. So difficult to guard. Everything counts, man. Everything is on a microscope right now. A dynamic player, and he's doing everything he can to muscle the runner Rebels to the finish line. Shaver trying to penetrate. Key jab, corner three. Yes.
Ali Oop, it's completing a perfect pass from McCabe. Tell you what, Muak has been relatively quiet on the night, but Jordan McCabe with an absolute dime. Less than a minute to play in regulation. 65 63, Leon Rice of Boise State will call for time. All right, so if you're Coach Leon Rice right now, this is a good opportunity to calm your team down a little bit. After this big play, you have full control of the game. I mean, meaning you're up by two with 41 seconds with the ball. You got an opportunity, an opportunity to calm down your troops, come up with a game plan. What are you going to run with 20 seconds on the shot clock? The other team is going to get the ball back. You want to make sure you leave this possession with some efficiency, with some productivity, you know, hopefully with some points on the board. But if nothing else, get fouled so you have a chance at the, uh, at the foul line. So Abu Kijab right there, he leads the team tonight with 16 points. If you are Leon Rice, who are you drawing this play up for? Well, you know, I, I really like personally, I mean, Kijab, sure, but he's getting a lot of his points because of the playmaking ability by Marcus Shaver. I, I think Marcus Shaver has been such a difference maker for Boise State tonight. You know what I mean? Like, he has done such a good job of causing havoc and getting his teammates a lot of open shots because of his ability to penetrate into the paint. It would not surprise me at all if Marcus Shaver, being the point guard, has the ball in his hands and there's something set for him to get an opportunity to drive to the basket because he's the reason oftentimes Kijab's getting some shots. That last three-point shot by Kijab in the corner, yeah. you know why he got that three-point shot? Because Shaver drove baseline, drew in his defender, and kicked it out to him. And it's so effective. Well, for as efficient as they have been tonight, Boise State just seven assists on 21 made shots. And UNLV almost the same. They have eight assists on 25 made baskets. Oddly enough, they had 20 assists on 26 made field goals against Air Force the other night. Wow. Back to the offense for Boise State. Kijab directing some traffic right now. There it is. And Shaver. Shaver. Yep. Back to Kijab. He'll have to work quickly. Five to go on the shot clock. Four to go. Three to go. And a foul down low by Ham. And he's in disgust right now. That's going to be two free throw attempts for Kijab. And then more importantly for him, Ham, that's his fourth personal foul. In that moment, are you letting them play on if you're an official? No, I think it's foul. I think it's foul. Yeah, I, I, think, I think there was a little too much contact there. Uh, but, yeah, I see what you're saying. If there was a little bit lighter contact maybe, but I, I think that was I think that was clear. I mean, just because they played a physical brand tonight for the first 30 minutes plus. Yeah. You know, now I want to see what Boise State does here if it goes in. If it goes in here, do they go into a 1-2-2 two, two press to kind of slow them down a little bit, make them run time off the shot clock and go back into their 2-3? Or do they stri stay straight up man-to-man? Kijab, 8 of 10 at the free throw line and a timeout for Boise State. <laughs> they have a four-point lead with 24.2 to go in regulation. A nail-biter. Don't go anywhere, folks. We will be back. Sixty-seven, sixty-three. Boise State with a four-point advantage after they were down by seven at the end of the first half. It's not like they played bad in the first 20 minutes of play, Richie, but they certainly recovered because of Marcus Shaver. Uh, yeah, I mean, Marcus Shaver's playing well. And not just him, and a lot of guys, Key Jab and others. But I just like the confidence by Coach Leon Rice to go in the press out of this timeout. Hamilton glued on him. McCabe, <laughs> no. Dagenhart with the rebound. They have to foul, and they will. Coming out of that timeout, they went full court man to man. Kijab, I love his defense on this. This is exact. Look at Kijab number 24. He's guarding the point guard at six foot seven. He guards him full court. This is exactly what Leon Rice wanted. A bad shot in traffic with a hand in the face with nobody to offensive rebound. And look what it got him. They got the defensive rebound. They get the ball back. Now they can just ice it here with a couple of free throws. It's a great look by our crew tonight. Overhead cam. Dagenhart's first free throw of the evening that was knocked down. 
79% as you see on the season and quiets it two for four. Lead is six. Time running down for Hamilton. Cosmetic three on the way, no, and that'll do it. Boise State off the mat. And the largest deficit this season for them at the half was erased. Final score here tonight, Boise State Broncos 69, UNLV 63. A lot of respect between these two coaches, Leon Rice talking to Kevin Kruger. Wow, that was a heck of a game. You guys did a great job. UNLV's coming, man. I'm telling you, they're, they're not a middle-of-the-pack team. I think this team, if they're fully healthy, could really make a run here down the stretch. It's a very talented group, but they're finally coming together. But Boise State, how about it? 16 of 17 they've won now. Impressive. 19th one of the season for them. Abu Kijab, 18 points. 8 of 10 from the free throw line. And Bryce Hamilton, 32 in a losing cause. For my broadcast partner, Richie Schuler, and our entire crew here in Boise, thanks for watching tonight on FS1, where Boise State comes from behind to beat UNLV 69-63. to We'll have more Boise State Broncos action on Sunday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time when Colorado State Rams come to town. Coming up next is TMZ Live. Have a great night, everyone, and so long.